Ruth chapter 3. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? Rest. That's not sleeping. That's taking care of her. Her future. She has come across family member, Boaz, and the Jewish law is the near kinsman is to marry the woman of the widow to bring up the seed of the, of the, of the husband. My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee. Now, uh, Ruth is looking out for Naomi. Now Naomi's looking out for her. Naomi's not so bitter no more. She's easing up. Now is not Boaz of our kindred. Oh, to Ruth, yeah, that's what you told me. Uh, she has no, really no idea. With whose maidens thou what was? Excuse me. So when Ruth was over at the field of Boaz, she hung out with the women, not the men. It would be the, the, the servants of Boaz too, the maidens, the young ladies. Behold, he whittleth, let me find that note there, it's past tense, he whittleth barley, that's where they take the barley, they, they throw it up in the air after, after breaking it, and the chaff is blown away, it's the barley harvest, well in chapter 2 verse 23, so she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz, what we just read, to glean unto the end of the barley harvest, here we are. This is the point where we are. And what is to come, the wheat harvest. But we haven't got to the wheat harvest. Right now, it's the barley. And Boaz is giving her permission to stay and do the wheat. Much things are going to happen. He wills the barley tonight in the threshing floor. Verse 3. Wash thyself. Wash thyself. Second Corinthians seven one. Second Corinthians seven one. Second Corinthians seven one. Now remember Ruth pitches the church. Though an old testament book. She's saved by her works. We're saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. But 2 Corinthians 7, 1, Having therefore these promises, daily beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So that's great. So Naomi is finally giving good advice. John 15, 3. She's not so bitter no more. <laughs> God's working her. Listen, what is going on in Ruth's life could not be anything but God. She happened of all the fields to show up at Boaz, and it happened to be the family. She's seen that God's taking care of them. In John 15, 3, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And Naomi tells us, listen, before you go meet Boaz, get yourself clean. That's not what the church is doing today. Prepare, you know, everybody today, oh, the, the rapture's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, things are getting closer, and it's getting closer. Yeah, we're one day closer to Jesus Christ, and yet we are a church that's most perverted when Jesus comes. You realize when we meet in the clouds the day of the rapture, there are going to be saints from the previous church ages that are more cleaner and purer than what we are, though we're all sinners. According to Revelations 1 through 4, when we are a church, we're boastful and prideful, and, and God says, Listen, you make me sick. Clint, wash yourself, therefore, and anoint the oil, put oil on your face. I mean, listen, th this is not like Jezebel painted her face. They are in a desert region of sun and heat. And this anointing would be protecting their, it'd be like a sunblock. There's no way to avoid the sun in Israel. It's a desert region. 
So there's annoying wouldn't be to make yourself look better or age yourself or unage yourself. It would be for protection of the skin. Anoint thee. And put thy raiment upon thee. Get dressed. Put clothes on. And get thee down. <laughs> look at Naomi ordering her now. Get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man. Don't go, ah, make a commotion. Go down there in humbleness. Go there with your virtue. But don't make anybody known you're there. But make not thyself known unto the man. Until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lieth down. You know, there's no embarrassment to Boaz. Oh, Boaz, you see that girl's hanging around you today? Oh, look, she's back. Oh, Boaz and Ruth. Oh. There's no need for that. Go quiet. When he lies down, thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. Why? Because Naomi's going to tell her to come back at night. And there are no street lights. There are no headlights. There's no halogen lights. There, if there's any lights there, it's candles, if not torches, if not oil lights. And when you're going to go walking through this place, it's going to be pitch dark. You may forget where he is, and you may accidentally end up with the wrong person of what you're going to do. And we don't want that to happen. Mark where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in. And uncover his feet. Deuteronomy 25 9. Deuteronomy 25 9. We'll look at how she's going to uncover his feet in a moment. But uncover his feet. I said Deuteronomy 25 9. I'm just going to show you scripture, scripture, and give you an idea. Deuteronomy 25 9. Then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders. Now this is the this is the nearest kinsman that will not do his brother's office for his brother that has died. In the presence of the elders shall lose in the, and lose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face. And they shall answer, So shall it be done unto the man that will not build up his brother's house. Now uncover his foot, his feet. Uncover his feet and lay thee down. So, when your feet get uncovered, when they get cold, they're going to, oh, you know, you want to be, you're going to reach for the covers. Many a night, you know, I will start off without no covers on. And as it gets colder and colder at night, I'll reach for those covers to cover my feet. Lay thee down right next to his feet. And he will tell thee what thou shalt do. Now there's nothing sexual. There's nothing perverted in what was been told. Only America would pervert. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. Obedience. Complete obedience. That's a mark of Ruth. And she went down unto the floor. And did it according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk. Now there are people who say he's intoxicated. It don't say intoxicated. Drunk is past tense of drinking. He could have had all the water he wanted. Um, where is it? In verse 9 of chapter 2, he says, Go to the vessels if you are thirst and drink. Well, I don't think he's going to be serving alcohol beverages to his workers, to the people. Probably, most definitely, that's water from a well that's been drawn. He could be drinking just regular unfermented wine. Where would anybody get the perverted idea, except for America, that he's intoxicated? 
Boaz is not that kind of man from the character he is. He loves God. His employers love him. He's well respected. He is in finances secure. He's not going to blow it, waste it all, and ruin a testimony and be intoxicated. And his heart was merry. That merry does not have to be introduced by intoxication. Man, he could have piles and he's laying on piles of barley. That's what he's doing. That is a bountifulness of God that God's playing. Hey, do you want to take a nap? You're tired? Just lay on one of them bounties of uh, barley I gave you. And he's had a feast with all his servants. He's had a feast with all his people. He went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. He's laying on the barley. So see, barley can be, corn, be called corn. Verse 2, he whittleth barley tonight. Verse 7, the heap of corn, that's barley corn. Yes, Native American corn of, of America was not known to Israel, not known to these regions until long after Christopher Columbus, but that's not the corn that we're thinking of. And you can find that in any dictionary. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. I got Luke 10, 39. Let's see what that one is. Luke 10, 39. I don't know. Luke 10, 39. She's not making herself a spectacle. She's not making herself. She's not being loud and clamorous. Luke 10, 39. And it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was much cumbered about serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part which she has not, which shall not be taken away from her. What's Mary doing? She's quiet and she's listening, and she's at the feet of Jesus. Ruth is at the feet of Boaz, and she's being quiet, and she's going to begin to listen. To what Boaz has to say. Isn't that a marvel? And it came to pass at midnight. Mark those midnights. God in his midnights. That the man was afraid. And turned himself. Alright, so in his sleep he becomes afraid. Nightmare, whatever it is. Doesn't know where he is. He turns himself. And behold, a woman lies at his feet. So he gets startled. He turns himself. He maybe grabbing, you know, his skirt to put it back on. Over it. Wait, wait a minute. There's a woman there, and there's enough light that he looks down and sees the form and the figure of a woman, but he doesn't know it's Ruth. And he said, "Who art thou?" And she answered, I am Ruth. I am Ruth. Thy handmaid. Still humble. Spread therefore thy skirt. Uh oh. A man shall not wear what pertains to a woman. A woman shall not wear what pertains to a man. Here's a man wearing a skirt. What are you going to do with that one? I read the other day in. I came yes and no, no and yes. I read the other day that um, it was high heels were worn by butchers so they could be out of the gook and blood and, and intestines and of the meat that was on the floor. And I looked that up, yay, and then nay. Some say yay, some say no. He realized Jesus told the disciples to bring their purse. What are you going to do? 
You're going to bring the American Asian into the Bible, or you're going to bring the Bible into the Bible. The men wore the skirts. And with wearing the skirt that he has right now, his legs are bare, and there's a woman there. And she says, take that skirt and over thy handmaid, for thou art near kinsman. What is all that about? Take that skirt, cover me up. You are next in line to marry me, according to the Jewish law, explained to me by Naomi. So what she's asking him, she's proposing to him, did you get this? I want you to take your skirt, will you cover me and take care of me all my life? That's a marriage proposal. That is, according to the Jewish law, sir, you are the near kinsman. I'm a widow woman. Will you take your skirt and cover me and take care of me? That's what he's saying. And he said, bless, happy. Genesis 30, 30 13, happy. Asher, I believe that's the child. The mother says, oh, you know, people are going to call me ha happy. Huh? What? Bless. Bless or happy. And it's Leah calling her son. Bless. Blessed be of the Lord. Now look at that. Look, look who he gives the credit to. He's giving it to the Lord. The Lord is in it. This is why Naomi's not bitter no more. She knows the Lord's in it. And now he's like, okay. My daughter. Uh-oh. She's no longer a handmaid. They have not come together. They are not husband and wife. You're my daughter. I have a responsibility for you right now, as Joseph had a responsibility to marry. The, the Bible says their husband married, but they had not come together. So now you've got a brother and sister relationship here. You know what? As far as the bride of Christ, you know what? We, we are called the sons of God by the salvation of Jesus Christ. And yet we are also the daughters of God. By being the bride of Jesus Christ. My daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end. She went down there. She didn't make a scene for herself. She uncovered his skirt, laid down beside him. What is the kindness? She showed respect. She showed honor. She showed purity. She showed virtueness. It was no... Anything sexual, anything perverted. That beginning, insomuch as thou followest not young men. Now go back to chapter 2, verse 23 again. So she kept fast by the maidens. Thou followest not the young men. Boaz was watching her, and she didn't know it. Had she gone off with the males and, and you know, hung herself around him and flaunted herself around him and teased and, and, and promote and, and all that as American women today, today in the workforce? Boaz would say, uh-huh, uh -huh, yep. And there are a lot of Christian women today in churches, Baptist churches, that are not like Ruth. The Bible says, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her in his heart, lust after her. She's done something to cause the lusting with her. Ruth is properly dressed. Ruth is properly being. Ruth is clean. She is not antagonizing. She is not trying to have men go go over her. And one of the things she does to do that, she hangs out with the women. Maidens, whether poor or rich. Ruth is a classification of, I don't care if you're poor or rich. I don't care. I'm going to hang out with those who I need to hang out with. And now, my daughter, look how things have changed for her. Look now, my daughter, fear not. So the implication already for G for Ruth to smile is he's accepted me. I will do to thee all thou requestest. Now can you imagine her right there. 
Here is a woman whose husband has died. She is a non-Israelite. Her, her gods are gods. She's coming to a land searching for God. She's coming to a people that she's a stranger of. She has to go out in the field and work after the reapers. And you know she's being taunted because she's a Moabite. And they re the Jews reject them. Just go ask Jonah and Peter. And here she is. She's come across a family member. And her, her mother-in-law says, you go do this. And she's not guaranteed that this guy is going to do what the law says. Because the law that we read prescribes something if he don't do it. And I, and I would assume that, that Naomi would tell her that there's a possible cause in the law, too, that he may not do it. And if he were to refer, refuse Ruth right now and say, girl, get out of here. She's forever a vagabond and, and a wanderer in Israel, a stranger. And they'll have to rely on at the, following the wine heart, though, I mean the wheat harvest, and then whatever comes after that. Begging. A widow woman and there were no jobs for women there were no equal rights for women requested for all the city of my people Jewish people Jewish people does know that thou art a virtuous woman well look at that the entire city, though they may hate a Moabite, though they may hate a Gentile, finds that she's clean and honorable to Jews. You know what the church is to be to the world and to Jews, especially since we have their Messiah? We are to be a virtuous woman, and yet we're a sickly woman. This woman... Ruth is respected. There is no ill report of her, and we're not going to do it tonight, but go and read Proverbs 31. And then go read Revelation 3, the very last church age called the Laodicean church age, and see what we do in the eyes of God. What he has to say about us, and that the action of God to the church age today is you make me sick. Whatever Ruth has, she doesn't flaunt. Yet the church flaunts what it doesn't have, God says. She takes what she, she meted out, the, the barley, and it, for her sassicate, and then she gives the excess to her mother-in-law. She's respectful to this man. Ruth obeys, and we never see her complaining, and she's a hard worker. And added to that, the Jews, the Jewish people say she's virtuous. Verse 12. And now it is true that I am thy nearest kinsman. Now can you imagine the smile on that face? But hey, he's accepted me. He's following. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let, let's look at something here for a minute. Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. And I'm going to show you Boaz. Now it came to pass in the days when judges ruled. Judges 21, 25. In those days there was no king in Israel and every man did that which right in his own eyes. That's not Boaz. That is not Boaz that the Lord's blessing. That the Lord gave a famine which is a judgment against sin in the Bible in the judges time. That's what Ruth started from. And it looks like that the judgment of that famine ended with Boaz's crops. Boaz is obedient to the Lord. And that this Moabite woman who is seeking God with all that she has of all the people in Israel, God brings her to Boaz. And it took the death of her husband. Now, we don't know what her husband was. We don't know how well he was, how he was with God. We have no idea. 
But we do know that her husband stayed in Moab and did not try to go back. We do know that. It took the death of the husbands for them to go back after hearing that there's bread in the land of Israel. And now this woman, this Moabitess woman, whose men of her country are in violation of the scriptures to come into the Jews, she's a Moabitess. Now she plays into the law because of her dead husband being a widow. I will do to thee that thou requires. For all the city of my people does know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman. How be it? There is a kinsman nearer than I. There's someone closer, Ruth. Now you wonder if that heart would have maybe she had her eyes on Boaz now. You know, maybe he was her dream boat. I don't know. But now there's another man in the picture. And if you wonder kind of Boaz too, if he's like, oh, I wish this guy was. But how we don't know how much love he has for Ruth, but he has respect for Ruth. That whatever he feels, and I can't say how he feels, but the law says there's a nearer there is a near kinsman, and we gotta do him first. That's a man that obeys the law. Terry, this night. It's the middle of the night. It's midnight. And it shall be in the morning. Second Advent. <laughs> Tell the church woman, the type of the church, all night long. Be in the morning that if he will perform unto thee the part of the kinsman. Now look at that, perform in part. Those are words used in acting, in Hollywood, in movies, and plays, and skits. And yet the Bible puts those two words to an activity followed in the law. Perform the law in that part of the law, not for entertainment purposes only, I think they say. Have you performed and done your part what the Bible tells the Christian? Going all the world and preach the gospel? Or have you done a performance and have you done your part in the play to pretend you're doing the Lord's work? Of a kinsman. Well. If he does it, well, okay. Fine. Let him do the kinsman part. That's the closer one. But if he will not do the part of the kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of the kinsman to thee, as the Lord liveth, lie down unto the morning. The morning. All right, there's someone closer to me. If he does it, he does it well. Now, I think that well doesn't mean, oh, well, I think it means, hey, you know what? I think you'd be in better shoes than me. I think you'd be far better with him than me because that's God's way. That's the law. And if he won't do it, relax. And he puts an oath of God. And I don't think Boaz is going to do an oath just lightly. I'll take care of you then. I'll take care of you then. Boaz abides by the law. He's a law-abiding citizen of Israel under God. And then take your rest. Wait the morning. It's too dark to go out there now. And she lay at his feet unto the morning. No sexual. The character here is she's trusting now. There's no nudity. And she rose up before one could know another. What that means right there, it's still dark enough. I mean, you could see shadows of people, but you, you couldn't, you know, is, 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 is that Sam over there? I, I can't, can't tell. It's where Sam lays. Not really sure. Couldn't really tell. And he said, let it be not known that a woman came into the floor. And we don't want people talking, do we? I mean, if Ruth is a type of the church and you have a Baptist meeting and everybody be talking about it. 
Get to grab the round of the phone. So, before everybody starts knowing each other, it's time to go. And the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. It looked bad if everybody, um, Boaz, what's that girl doing there? Well, nothing happened. Still. That would be just as much as me to walk up to the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market, get ready to preach, and I got a bottle of something in a brown bag. It's Pepsi Cola. But what does it look like? A Christian has no business doing or looking like they're doing sin. A Christian has no business alone, even if you're gospel, uh, gossip. Uh, how can you say? Even if you're presenting a, a gospel to a prostitute on the street corner, that don't look good. And if it would be part of a bus and a cop showed up and you were arrested, though you were preaching the gospel to her and showing her Jesus Christ, it did not look good, did it? And if you did clear your name and everything was found out to be, you got a reputation now. And Boaz is, I don't want to ruin this virtuous, hardworking, obeying woman. I don't want to ruin her character nor mine. So let it be a woman came onto the floor. So evidently there's no women there. Well, who made the meals? Then Jesus tell, I think it was Peter and James, go before, there'll be a man there carrying a pitcher. When he shows you an upper room, go prepare the supper. And some of the feminist people use that. Word. There's no women here. So where was I? 15. And he said, bring the veil. She's wearing a veil. She's covered her face. That thou hast upon thee, and hold it. She takes off her veil, and holding it. I don't want to be getting a look into her face. Ooh, what am I getting here? And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her. I don't understand what laid it on her means. He puts it in a veil, but I don't know what, uh, why it would be. And she I went... I picked it up and... Put it over, yeah. her, it over her shoulder, head. yep. And she went into the city. Now watch this. Chapter 2, verse 14. And Boaz said to her, At mealtime, come thou hither, eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn. He's always given her a handful of purpose. Have you ever had the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior? Have you ever had him just give you a handful of purpose? You just, here, take it. Have you ever just had nuggets in the Bible, reading the Bible? Have you ever dealt with somebody? Have you ever had trials and tribulations with someone, and God just sends somebody else and say, hey, God, take care of you. Everything's going fine. Going good. God is great. So he gives her purpose, six measures of barley. I don't know why. Six, I don't know how much six would weigh, but six measure by. And she went into the city. And when she came to her mother in laws, look at that. Goes right home. Doesn't stop off, doesn't go there, doesn't go chatting. She said, Who art thou, my daughter? So it's still kind of, or maybe she's calling from inside the house where she, Who is it? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, These six measures of barley gave he me. For he said to me, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Well, look at that. He's a provider for the two widow women. He doesn't have to provide for Naomi. But look, look at his virtueness. Look at his giving. Look at his provider. She's come up to him. She's laying by and says, spread your skirt over you. Are you going to take care of me? I'm going to take care of you so much. I'll also take care of the one who's taking care of you. And you're taking care of her. Relax. Relax. Then she said, sit still. Now Ruth is patient. My daughter. 
until thou know the matter will fall. Is it going to be him or is it going to be Boaz? For the man will not be in rest until he has finished the thing this day. I'll tell you right now, he, he's going to, as soon as he can get this thing going, get, it's almost like, you know, he, he's got the eyes for Ruth and he wants to take care of her. But one man's in the way.